nothing without you slow down hi everyone welcome back to my youtube channel as you all know i am serofa zobudumele and thank you so much for stopping by so today i am doing story time of how i came face to face with depression i was diagnosed with depression in 2020 october and before the diagnosis i actually went through something i dated a guy we met through facebook and we started talking the conversation went to whatsapp and he was such a lovely guy very amazing i don't want to lie except his amazingness was something to pay attention to but how can i pay attention to something so good something that actually means that the relationship is very healthy and i'm with a good guy we started dating in may and the relationship lasted for five months five months nearly cost me my life he was not working he was a student he used to work and then he left his work to go to school fine that is a good thing right and at the time i didn't mind dating someone who is not working because as long as you don't ask me for money you are here for love then there is no problem and in future you're going to have your own money so at least you are future driven you are goal driven fine we dated and during this relationship i was smoking weed so apparently there is this belief that is going around to say people who smoke weed are dumb they are always high and they can do whatever so this guy was actually good because it was some sort of an investment you know he was hoping to get something in future and he never asked for money throughout the months except he was waiting for the right time the sex was amazing for a reason he thought that if his sex was so good and so awesome he's gonna ask me for whatever favor at some point and i'm not gonna say no because at this time he has built this foundation of a fake love and everything is good so i'm just gonna give him whatever it is that he wants because i am thinking that he is the most amazing thing to ever happen to me i mean he is not the first guy i've ever dated all of them were creepy and this one was good so i had to sit down and learn you know i was always smart and i was it's like i knew his plans but i didn't know his plans there was this voice that would always warn me to say man hi corner this guy so this one morning he calls me to tell me that his family is demanding money from him to help with the renovations and i was like okay but they can't do that because they know exactly that you are not working you are still a student so they have to either go on with their renovations or wait for you until you find a job and then you are able to help them yo guys apparently i was not supposed to say this hey, hey. Apparently, I was supposed to be like, okay, baby, who, how much do they want? Oh, no, baby, this is how much they want. And then I just send the money or I say to him, no, I will make a plan. At the time, I am working as a nurse in this village. The guy is from the very same village. You understand? And it was during the pandemic. So he was not in school. He was at home. Because everything was on lockdown. All right, fine. And I couldn't come home as often as I used to because you had to have the permit to travel. And, you know, it was a lot. The taxis were not there. So I had to stay at work most of the time. So this guy actually had a chance. He had this leverage. And although the relationship was perfect, ne? there was a time when he would say something that would leave me very surprised and... To my surprise, it was very hard for me to ask further on this topic. And I would just be there and wonder, what, why is this guy doing this or saying this? All right. The relationship continued after that. And then there was a time when he went to visit his friend. He didn't tell me anything. It was very surprising because he told me everything was, we were in a very good relationship. I mean, healthy, the healthiest relationship. I asked him, hey, Batum, how can you visit your friend without telling me? And he's like, hey, don't be in that village thinking that you are there for me. You are there for yourself and I am 
able to do whatever I want. Hey, so this guy is now speaking a language that I don't understand. It's like he is tired of me, except he's not saying that. All right, he came back, and at the time I went to this other tavern to drink, it was some event, Beshenyana. So he was there and I was there, but we were not talking. Like I decided to distance myself because he was starting to send these signals that I don't understand. Besides, if you feel like you don't want me, it is simple. You just have to tell me that I'm done with this relationship and then I can move on with my life. You move on with your life. It's not rocket science. I mean, hey, hey. okay, fine. At some point during that night at the bash, he brings his best friend, apparently. And then the best friend is supposed to be introduced to me. And I was not in the mood because I have now seen the direction. It's like I didn't see with my physical eye, but I had this spiritual eye. And I'm, I wasn't even aware of this thing. I was not a spiritual person at the time. You need to listen to me carefully. I was just living life and I didn't know all these bad things that were happening. And I was not even on YouTube to find out that some people are actually experiencing this and that and that and this. So I had to date this pathetic and evil guy to actually know this thing. So I was not in the mood. And then I turned and gave the best friend my back because why would you introduce me to somebody? This guy at the beginning of the relationship, he had a girlfriend whom he said he's going to dump. And I said to him, I'm not going to be the one to force you to dump somebody who you have been with for a few years. This girl is in school with you. So if you are going to dump her now because I'm forcing you, the minute you go back to school, you are going to get back with her. And then what? You are going to cheat on me or what? You are going, I, I'm not, I don't understand. But if you are going to do the dumping, that is your business. Fine. So you cannot come and introduce me to your best friend when you still have a girlfriend you haven't dumped. After three months of the relationship, or was it four months? I have always been a very strong person and I have always been able to distance myself when I see that I'm no longer being treated fine and there is no apparent reason. So I was ready to move out of this relationship actually because it was not something that I actually wanted at the time you know this guy was changing to become something that i don't understand okay at this point i had forgotten about the conversation that we had over the phone when he asked for money of which he didn't really ask he was asking but in a very dodgy manner i had forgotten about that completely so we still continue to date because he was there and he didn't want to dump me although he was being a different person like he was changing every day one night he came to visit me wearing a leather jacket navy leather jacket he bought from true words and then we spent the night together and that night i was on my period so he insisted that we must have sex while i'm on my period and i didn't want to because it is not a very cleanly thing to do and it was not the first time he actually forced me to have sex with him when I was on my period. So, okay, we had sex because it wasn't the first, first time. And in the morning he left, so he decided to leave the jacket behind. He usually left some of his clothes behind from time to time when the relationship was still good. So this time when he left the jacket behind, it was not a surprise to me. The guy left in the morning and he left. He never came back actually. And then when I call him, he's not picking up his phone. He's not replying to my texts like he used to. Can't tell what is happening. I'm not getting an answer. And then a week passed with the jacket in my closet. Two weeks later, I don't know how is it exactly that I'm feeling. I'm starting to feel very ill like i'm starting to change and it's like there is this weight on my shoulders and i'm starting to remember the very things from my past ne? that used to hurt me a lot it's like that pain is coming to life and i'm remembering everything and then i'm just feeling so sad and i'm crying and i'm shitty and 
I don't understand what is happening. And then during the third week, I was just sitting there by the window having my smoke and a glass of wine. And then I don't know what is happening, guys. It's like there was something coming from behind. As I'm sitting like this, ne? there was a window here. And then as you can see from the background, my closet was like this. It was there and facing towards me. So there is this thing coming from the closet. Remember, the jacket is in there. This guy has to leave and go somewhere. And it was very chilly. The weather was still very nana cold. I asked him to come and take his jacket. And he was like, no, I'll come and take the jacket. But he never comes. He never comes to get his jacket. And that's all I ever wanted, actually. Because if the relationship is going to end, it mustn't end with your jacket in my room. You have to come and get your jacket so that when I move on, I move on. I'm sitting by the window, still not feeling good. I'm messy. I don't know what is happening to me, you know. And I do want to move from this relationship. But this guy is making things difficult for me. He doesn't want to come and get his jacket. Now I know that the relationship is over now. Hey, hey. Something said to me, there was this voice. I don't know, man. There was this voice. It said to me, get up and take that jacket and cut it. Cut it. Yeah? I did that. I got up. It's like there was this command and then I just got up and took the jacket from my closet and then I started cutting it with a sharp object i cut it with a sharp object i did the most with the jacket and then after i did that i was not drunk and i was not high i smoked weed actually for relaxation to find ease and euphoria i took the jacket and his toothbrush and some of the sex toys we were using i put them in a plastic and then i walked it was in the night I think it was at around 2 11 p.m it was dark and i was not used to walking around that village at the time of the hour alone and i was not scared of anything it's like i had lost my mind at the time something in my mind was lost i took the plastic and i walked as i walked it's like i, I was even wearing a gown i was wearing takis so that i can walk faster the way that i was dressed up like if you could see me then, you would tell Horamara there is something wrong with this person. I didn't look like a normal person. And no normal person can dress up like that. It doesn't matter whether it was at night or whatever. No normal person can dress up like that. I got to his house. Actually, he wasn't sleeping where his elders were staying. Ne? There were two different houses. So he would go to this house during the day to eat and do other things. And then at night, he was sleeping at... A separate house in a different yard a few miles away from this one that the elders were using so i went there to the house that he was he was sleeping in i put the plastic outside just there at the corner of the stoop and then i left i arrived at my room and then i slept i woke up in the morning and i was not myself it's like i was not in the right state of mind and after waking up, I had to, I realized that actually I am starting to miss some pieces in my head. I slept last night, but then I'm waking up and I'm a different person. It's like I'm messed up in the head. I don't know what is happening to me. After a few minutes of waking up and trying to recollect my thoughts and my memory, I then remember that last night I did the most. I did the most and I'm a very woke person actually. I remember everything around me i remember the things from a long 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 time ago but this time i didn't remember some things and i had to sit down and think hard a few minutes later i realized some things that last night this is what happened and the voice came again and it said to me go and get that plastic at the time guys i am feeling very sick like this thing is just happening i don't know what is happening to me but i am more sick than i was actually i got up and i was walking very slowly all of a sudden this was new to me i got up i walked to his house and then i was walking very slowly i was tired i was sick and my body was in severe pains i didn't know what was happening to me and my eyes were teary as fuck. i was crying endlessly so i went to the house 
and then I found the plastic right where I put it. I just took the plastic and went back to the nurse's home. I got there and then I called him. Several times he didn't pick up and then at some point he calls me back. And then to call him was just to tell him that guy, I don't know what happened, but I found myself tearing your jacket up. So it is here and it is destroyed. This guy didn't seem angry or something, ne? but he said something to me. He said last night at around 10, he started feeling very ill. His body started experiencing severe pains and he didn't know where that was coming from. So he didn't sleep at the house that he usually sleeps in. He decided to go and sleep next to his family so that they can check up on him from time to time. Okay, fine. Actually, I told him that I was just calling to tell you that I have destroyed your jacket and I apologize because this is not something that I usually do. I have broken up with guys and I have never ever destroyed anyone's item because I wanted to get back at them. And at the time, this was uncalled for. I don't even know what caused it. I was about to go and actually throw away the jacket and he said, no, don't throw it away. I'm coming to get the jacket. I will get the jacket even if it is destroyed. Guys, hey, the jacket nearly took my life. Bona, I was there and then this guy is promising to come and take the jacket but he never comes, he never shows up. And every day of my life with this jacket in my room, I am losing a little bit of myself, a little bit of the life in me, a little bit of the energy in me, a little bit of everything that I was feeling. I'm no longer feeling good at all and it, it is becoming worse by the day i'm not aware of this thing at all like i'm just keeping the jacket there and so he has to go back like it is that time and you cannot go back with this door still open like this if you're going to go back then please let's meet up and end the relationship officially because now i came here to work and i do not want drama i don't want anything else that is going to mess up my life in my working place no, he was like, no, I'll come and meet you, but he doesn't come. Something said to me, go to this guy's house. Go there. It was at night. I'm no longer afraid of the night. So I walked to the guy's house and I couldn't get inside. I asked someone from his neighbor to go and call him for me. And I said to him, don't tell him that it is me who is looking for him because he might not come. No, the guy said, no, someone is looking for you. And then the guy came. As soon as he came out and he saw that it was me, he did this. Like he was very pissed to see me there. And I'm there and I'm studying him. It's like, I don't know, man. God was trying to show me something that was actually hidden under whatever that I thought was a relationship or a good guy. He started talking and then he was saying a lot of things. At some point he said that, you can't buy me with your money. Huh? I can't buy you with my money. What are you saying? I have never given you any money, Mus. What are you saying when you say I can't buy you with my money? Of course, I don't have money. And at the time, guys, I had forgotten everything. It's like I had forgotten that this guy once called me to ask for money and I didn't give him what he wanted. Hence, he changed. And it, he changed soon after that. So he walked me back to Ness's home. And we were talking, but he was saying a lot of things that didn't make sense. And he didn't want to dump me even in through his speeches. Ha -ha. We got to the clinic and then our night ended with a kiss that was very dead. Yo, I had never, ever, ever been kissed in that cold manner. Like that, this guy, remember that he has kissed me before and his kiss was filled with a lot of feelings. Right now, this kiss is no longer having any feelings. He, it is dead, it is cold. It is not the kiss that I know. I knew then that hour, this is not the guy that I met sometime in May and this is not the guy that I want to continue with. So it is best that we take our separate ways, even though he doesn't want to dump me. Bye-bye. So my shift was starting the next day. 
on a Wednesday and it was ending the next week on a Tuesday. I had to work for seven days and at the time I'm feeling very ill. I don't know what is happening to me. I am walking very slowly. I can't even speak. You know, I am tired. I am exhausted actually. At the time, I decided to sit down. Now I'm an overthinker. So I had to sit down and overthink of actually what could be happening to me. And I stumbled upon a thought that said, maybe you are extremely hurt by this guy and his actions, you are now uh, starting to be depressed. Depressed. Yeah, okay. So I was actually understanding this and i was accepting what yeah probably i might be depressed now so now i am learning to accept that okay i am actually going into depression because of this guy and the fact that the relationship is over but that is not so as a good man i am not that kind of a person if you no longer want me then it's fine fine it's okay that's probably a good reason why we have to end at some point, right? Mm -mm. I worked for the whole seven days, walking slowly like that. And then on Monday at around 11, I was on tea break and I couldn't eat. I haven't eaten for like three weeks. I was on tea break having my coffee. Coffee, I could drink coffee and I could smoke a lot, but I couldn't eat food. It's like I was not having appetite. I was, I had lost interest in eating. And as I'm sitting by that chair by the window, guys, with the jacket still inside my room in a plastic, I'm having this very thought, or it was a command, or it was a voice, I don't know, but something said, my life is very shitty. You have to accept, Hore, you will never be happy in life. And no matter how hard you try to remain pure and you try to attract good, it will never come to be. So just end it. Kill yourself. Huh? Kill yourself, Osinyana. That time I'm a mother of two beautiful children. I have a mother and a father who needs me. My siblings, guys, there's a lot going on for me. I haven't even lived a life that I want to live. So I'm going through this thing and I'm trying to process it and overthink. That is what actually saved me from this terrible mess. Overthinking. I said, okay, fine. If I'm going to kill myself, how am I going to do it? Do I overdose on pills? No. I have seen people who tried to commit suicide. They overdosed on some type of pill and then it didn't work. They started having other serious health issues like epilepsy, status epilepticus. And they are now on treatment. Others, they have lost their minds. Like this, these things can damage you. What if I try to kill myself this way and then it doesn't work? Okay, or maybe I can cut my wrists open. But then what if I don't die? And then I'm going to live with the scar that reminds me every time. I do not want to end up living with scars that remind me of something that I did to try to end my life in the past. Because this thing is going to haunt me for the rest of my life. And then another one said, okay, maybe you could try hanging yourself. And I was like, no, but that is a lot of work. How am I going to reach the ceiling? Hmm? And then I, what am I going to use? No, man. I was like, no, I can't. And then in that moment... I remember that there was this other time back in 2019 I was actually feeling like smoking weed and I didn't have Rizla and I couldn't go to the shops because the shops were closed it was late at night so I opened up a Bible or one of those small blue Bibles that they give to us at school I had that Bible and I went through the Bible so before I removed that clear paper Something said, what you are doing is very wrong. You can't be smoking weed from a paper that belongs in the Bible. It doesn't matter whether it has words in it or whatever, but it is wrong. So just open up this Bible and pray for yourself and read in a few words before you do this sin. I did that. And I came across something that said, suicide is a sin. God will never accept you in his kingdom. 
if you commit suicide. I don't even know why this thing was all up in my face, but it was there. Fine. I smoked my weed and now I remember those words. That suicide is a sin and if I'm going to kill myself, I'm not going to make it to the kingdom of God. And I want to be there with the angels. You know what? Immediately after that, I decided to call my aunt who was in sex stop. The reason why I called my aunt is because my parents at the time, they didn't actually take me seriously. You know, they didn't take me seriously. So there was this one person that I know her whenever she calls for her own personal problems, my parents run. They will run to save this person. So I called this person and luckily she picked up the phone at that hour. And I told her that, Mama, this is what I'm feeling. I want to end my life. I actually dated a guy and then the relationship has ended, although it is not official. So suddenly I'm feeling like this and I have been ill for some weeks. And now it is the suicidal thought or command, if I may put it that way. So my aunt called my parents and then my parents called me back and then I gave them the story of which it was the very first time I had to tell my parents, like open up to my parents and tell them the truth. Because I realized that if I don't tell the truth and I decide to lie about certain things, how are they going to take me seriously? They are not going to take me seriously. And luckily, the relationship, my little brother and my little sister knew about this relationship and they have seen this guy in the video call when I was once home, you know, th th during the five months period when I dated this guy, I have only been home once. So they saw him then and from time to time they would call me and I was with this guy. So somehow they knew him and he knew about them as well. So my parents were like, oh no, Seho, this is very serious. Let us come and get you now and then you can come and be home. And then something said, but I have to go to work tomorrow. Like it's my last day on duty and then I'm going to be off for seven days. And seven days is a lot of time so I can be home on Wednesday. That's what I said to them actually. And they were like, okay, no, fine. If you feel like you are strong enough, then fine, you can stay there. I stayed. Guess what? The following day on a Tuesday, around the very same time that I had the suicidal thought the previous day, this guy texted me on WhatsApp and he said, I am actually deciding to step back. And then I said, let's be specific. What does stepping back mean? Because stepping back can be a lot of things. Someone can say it means I'm taking a break. Someone can say it means I'm dumping you. So what is it? Are you dumping me? It was very hard for him to say I'm dumping you. So I had to push it and say are you dumping me and he said yes i'm dumping you and i was like okay fine thanks for finally saying something that i've always wanted to hear you say and then i stopped texting the guy you know and i was very ill so i had to focus on myself i continued with the day i was on duty and you know it was very hard it was very difficult but i was able to work and i never made a mistake I was there and I never even yelled at a patient or my colleague because something is not going right in my life. All I know is they kept asking, what is wrong with you? And I would say I'm very ill. I don't know, but I'm, I'm not feeling well. I'm very ill. So later that day, I realized that, you know what? My mind is actually racing and it has been racing for weeks now and I just need a break because if I don't get a break, I'm going to crash. I had to consult, do my very own consultation. So I consulted and in this consultation, I didn't want anything except for Valium because I had to induce the sleep that was going to last for a very long time. And then I'm going to wake up feeling a little bit at ease. So I got the Valium and I was like, no, don't inject it now. I will inject it when I knock off at seven, because if you give it to me now, I'm going to sleep now. And at the time we were having staff shortage very serious issue so i couldn't be off duty because now i had to go and sleep at around that time i realized that i'm actually not going to be able to travel home the next day with a taxi because i am exhausted like i am exhausted to an extent that i can't even explain 
So I called my mom and said to her, you know what? Please ask my sister to come and get me and she must leave there by 4 p.m. So that by 7 she is here. I don't want any stories. They did that and my sister didn't make it to Hanalakta at 7 actually. She came there at around 8. And that one hour, here I was anxious. I was panicking. I was moving up and down because where is this person? I might end up committing suicide because she's not here and I'm trying to run away from this place because at the time I felt like there is some evil spirit in this place that is actually pushing me. My sister came and then I got the Valium injection. We drove home and I didn't see anything on the way because I was sleeping the whole time. I remember getting home and then I said hi to my parents and then I just walked out. So the next morning when I woke up, I opened up my eyes. I was in this very same room. This is my bedroom. And I was the one who came up with the design concept. But the next morning when I woke up and opened up my eyes, I was like, where am I? It is all gray in here. Like the walls are gray. The ceiling is gray. And I didn't even realize that this is a ceiling. Like I was staring at this thing. A few minutes later, guys, that's when it clicked. Jorge, you are in your bedroom. Remember, you are the one that came up with the concept. You wanted gray. This is a cornice. You know, I started saying, oh, this is my wall art. I bought it at Mr. Price. This is this. This is that. And then soon after, I got irritated sleeping in this bedroom alone. So I moved to my brother's bedroom and then I slept next to him for like two minutes. And then I got irritated and then I went to sleep in the house with my sister. And that's where I could finally sleep peacefully so i stayed home for seven days not feeling well and i was off and i told my mother that no if i'm not feeling fine after seven days then i'm going for consultation so wednesday i went to the doctor and i had to be truthful as well so i told him exactly what happened because that's what i thought was the truth the doctor was like, no, this is depression, but I can't diagnose you exactly. So I'm just going to give you these pills and then you will have to be booked for a psychologist. Okay, fine. I came back home with a sick note for seven days and then I had to call work. At the time when I left Khana Lachte, I didn't bring my phone. Something said to me, leave your phone behind and go and focus on yourself. You will get this phone when you are feeling fine. So my phone is there and I don't have any contact details. I can't phone anybody until I now remember that, no, at some point I had to ask for directions because my sister was lost on her way to Hanalakte. So this security guy actually helped me to direct my sister into the place. So I took my sister's phone and then I called this guy. Before that, actually, I called the ex because he had the numbers are a lot of people that can actually pass the message to my manager to tell him that i am booked sick you know the phone rang twice and something said hang up drop that call and never ever call this guy again i don't know why but i did that and i stopped calling him from that day so i got i was able to get someone else's numbers and then i was able to communicate with my manager and I gave him the sick note. So I finally went to meet my psychologist and the psychologist. Ne? So I had a chat with the psychologist and she said to me, do you know that people can come into your life with an agenda? And I didn't understand what she was saying actually. And it didn't make sense. Agenda in at the time though. So she said a lot of other things like you are an eagle and you are flying with birds. And these things at the time when we were speaking, they were not things that I can comprehend until later on though. Later on, I was able to sit down and say, damn, that woman is really good. And it's like she has a spiritual eye or something. But the things that she said to me are the things that didn't make sense then, but only turned out to be true.
So I was home, I came back home and I was given my antidepressants, which I took for 10 days and I didn't see any improvement. And now I'm a person who smokes weed and I want to drink my alcohol. So I stopped taking the antidepressants and then I decided to live my life the way that I've been living my life. And I went to Jobek to visit this other family friend just to get away from, you know, home. And when I'm there, I had a dream. I had a dream and it happened twice. I was there for the weekend. So Friday, actually Saturday morning around 6 a.m. I dreamt of this guy, the ex. He was there looking dirty in the dream. He was looking so dirty and so young, you know, like a very young boy. So he was busy teasing me and he was very rude and disrespectful with his friends. In the dream, I was very hurt. Guys, I don't want to lie. In the dream, like I could see my pain in the dream. And then the dream stopped. So I carried on with the day. It was Saturday and then there was this part we had to do preparations. And then, you know, I was busy the whole day. I then slept on Sunday night at around 2 a.m. Actually, around the very same time, Sunday morning now, at around 6, the dream came again. And then it was just like the previous night. This guy was there with his friends looking dirty. And then they were teasing and disrespecting me, saying all these hateful things. So in that dream now, I got angry. I got angry. Like, I, I, I was mad. And then there was this cord, an electric cord. It was lying there. I took the cord. And then I started beating him. I beat him up into a pulp. Like at some point he was lying there. His friend tried to get into the beating and then I beat them as well. At some point the guy was lying there like he was dead. And then happy I started stressing. What, who, but who, did I kill Wanabatu? This was not my plan. I was just reprimanding him and disciplining him. Like what did I do? This is not what I wanted to do. I woke up and I was very distressed about this dream because they say that if you are going to have this kind of a dream where someone is doing something to you or even if they are not doing something to you but you are beating this person up in your dream just understand that this person is your enemy and you have defeated the enemy so i told some people about this thing because i was looking so stressed man and then people were like, hey, man, you were not like this yesterday. What is wrong with you today? And I was like, guys, now I'm having these dreams. Ne? The other night it was this. And then this morning it was this. And they said, you must be very glad if you're going to dream like that. Because it means that you have won the enemy. But I don't understand. I dated this guy for five good months. And this guy was good throughout the relationship. How is he my enemy? how exactly how is he my enemy i came back home and then i told my parents about the dream my parents apparently they also know some translations of the dreams and they said the same thing so i was like guys the dreams are not stopping like it's like every now and then whenever i close my eyes i'm, I'm having a bad dream i have this dream so they said no let's take you for a traditional consultation yo we went for a traditional consultation hey guys i didn't believe the things that were said to me like they were scary as fuck i was like what the fuck did this guy really what the fuck apparently i was dating a witch this guy was practicing witchcraft and he was also a satanist so we got to the traditional healer and you know i was very ill i was out of my mind actually i was not crazy but some parts of my mind were no longer alive i was no longer alive inside and when we got there they threw the bones and i discovered actually that the psychologist really prophesied my life this guy came into my life with an agenda he was sent by his elders and some of the village members to come and date me for my money. And 
So the guy was sent to come and date me for my money. And then as soon as I didn't give him what he wanted, he decided to go to his witch doctor to consult on my name. When he got there, the plan was to kill me. So the witch doctor was like, no, you don't have to use any other method. This person has had a very difficult life. She knows pain more than anything. She has been through a lot. So ours is just to remind her of the pain. And we are going to give her this bag, Amina, which is a love potion. And this potion... We are going to use it on her so that she loves you very much and when now you have to dump her. So this thing is going to drive her crazy, actually. So they took his jacket and worked on it with Muti to work on me as a love potion and also to bring back all the painful memories and also to bring depression closer to me so that by the time this guy dumps me, I'm so much in love with him and... There's nothing I can do. He doesn't want to change his mind. He doesn't want to listen to me. I didn't do anything wrong. So mine is just to kill myself. That's what happened. So the jacket was brought to my room and it stayed there because it had a purpose. Even after I had destroyed it, this guy couldn't come and get it because he knew that the Muti is still alive and it has to work on me. The reason why I had to feel like killing myself on a Monday and the guy dumped me on Tuesday was God. Like, I, I, it, everything happened sooner than it was supposed to. And then it started making sense again. Before we broke up and he was giving me that run around, I could tell from Mara there is something bugging this guy. This guy is actually very stressed and I don't know what his issue is. So he said to me by that time when I asked him, no, actually my girlfriend is pregnant. She has been cheating on me, blah, blah, blah. It was all a lie. Mm -hmm. And I said to him, but you have been cheating as well. And you said you want to dump this person. So if she's pregnant now, why are you stressed about it? But let me not dwell on that. That's what I said to him. So it was just a story to make up for why he is so stressed. The reason why he was stressed up is because he was sent to come and date me. And although he was sent with an evil agenda, he didn't know that they are going to tell him to execute me. And what he knew was that he's coming to date me for my money, but he didn't know that I'm actually very smart and I'm not going to give him the money that he wanted. He thought that his mission was an easy one and it was going to be accomplished very easily. So they had to come to a point whereby now I have to be executed. And he is the one that is supposed to bring everything to me because he is the one who has access to me. So this guy, like there was a lot happening actually. And the reason why he felt sick when I was busy stabbing the jacket is because I was killing his smoothie. So he had to be affected somehow, some way. So now the execution didn't go well. And I was told that, you know, even some of your colleagues know about this thing. They know that the relationship is not a real one. Even the time when I was very ill and they kept asking her, what is wrong with me? They knew exactly what was wrong. And apparently I was supposed to kill myself and be found in the nurse's home a few weeks or a few days later, rotten and with, what are those things that fly around when something is dead? You know, those things. Yeah, that's what should have happened. And the whole community should have come to see a nurse who has committed suicide because a boyfriend dumped her. Yo, Batum, I have never ever been through that kind of shit. It was horrifying. That guy, apparently, he told me during the before the relationship that he was born in 1994 and I was born in 1993. So... After the breakup, he only reveals his real age on Facebook. He posts it there on his information. So this guy said he was actually born in 1994 and I was born in 1993. Only to find out that he was actually born in 1996. He is the same age as my little brother. The reason why he had to make this information available only at this time is to hurt me even more he thought he was driving me more crazier and he will drive me to suicide not knowing that of course i did feel dirty for dating someone as young as he was but 
three years it's not a train smash besides he is the dirty one for dating a gogo like me not that i'm a gogo but you know what i mean you know what i mean so because i smoke weed and my parents didn't know then that i was smoking weed they would come to fetch my cops and then when they get there they find those weed things there everything every little proof and they would think that i killed myself because of the drugs Kanti, it's not the drugs this person bewitched me to commit suicide and then after committing suicide they don't even know that there was a guy involved they're just gonna think maybe it was the drugs when it wasn't the drugs weed was my euphoria and i used weed during my depression period to heal and be good and as you see me today i am a very alive person i no longer smoke weed i stopped smoking weed because it was no longer beneficial that thing was chopping all of my money and i needed money for other things so now i had to go through a very thorough traditional workout and cleansing i had to drink those things i had to bath with those with those things and the razor did the wax you know it was moody all the way and i was on sick leave for two months so time is moving time is moving it is not on my side and i'm not healing as fast as i have to you know and i realized that although this guy actually gave me depression with witchcraft i was having my own issues you know i was having some things that i didn't know about like i was this sometimes i would be just sad and down low and i don't even know what is the cause so i realized that if this guy could actually go out there to consult on my name and realize that i have a lot going on for now then it means that i have to sit down and do some introspection a very deep one for that matter and i realized that i was having this childhood trauma and it was true you know this thing i will talk about it on another story time but it was something that was actually a joke and we would joke about it until my daughter was six years old and i looked at her and i was like mama so you want to tell me that these are the things that happened to me when I was this little, I was this young, when these things happened to me and that's when it started to hit me and I realized that I have been sitting with this thing and it has introduced me to pain. I was very young, six years old. So I have been a mess because of that childhood trauma. So revisiting my past and overthinking about the things that have happened in the past actually that might have hurt me that badly really helped me because i was able to know the truth actually i was able to realize the things that actually did me wrong as a child and i am thankful that this guy introduced me to depression because if it wasn't for him i wouldn't be aware now and you know ever since i have dealt with the depression i haven't felt sad i haven't cried guys i'm even glowing as you can see i am gaining weight you know not that i want to gain weight but when i'm too skinny i'm not beautiful as well it, it's like i can see that there is something that is lacking so right now i am at my best i am at my best and i'm thankful so now i was left with a few weeks and I had to prepare myself mentally and physically to go back to work because regardless of what was going on i had to go back to work and earn a living you know so now i went back to work it was in december and i was supposed to work day duty so i had this little prayer i held it for a few days a little prayer deep inside of me that you know i wish i could go back to working night duty because night duty is not going to bring me a lot of attention and a lot of attacks at the time i had lost weight yo i was very very skinny i was petite actually i looked like a child you know i had to go back even with this drastic change and i knew that people are going to talk they are going to talk but i had to go back going back to work i asked my mother that i'm not gonna use a taxi because being on a taxi is gonna bring me a lot of attention and people are gonna start talking already that she's back she's back and i don't want that so they took me back to work and i got there late at night so in the morning i woke up i bathed 
and I presented myself at work and damn, people were shocked to see me. Guys, people were shocked to see Sehofa Zobudumele still alive and kicking, no matter how skinny she was. And although I was skinny, I was very sexy. I was very sexy. I was beautiful. You know, I looked like I had aged backwards. Lanchalohan, yes, sis. Guys, this story is actually fucked up because I couldn't put the dots together at first, but after a few months, it started making sense, you know. I started regaining my memory back, I started regaining some of my senses back, and it happened that it is true. It is very true. I didn't go to only one traditional healer, guys, because this thing was difficult. I had to go to many traditional healers. I had to go to many prophets. I had to go to many pastors for prayers. You know, I needed a whole lot of cleansing. So one of the traditional healers told me that this guy is actually into satanism. And he made a blood covenant on your name to say that he's going to deliver you to his master. Remember I said we would have sex when I was on my period. That time he was feeding one of his creatures. I don't know which one is it, but he was feeding himself with my own blood. Fine. And then that's where he knew that my blood has a particular or a certain type of value that can be used in his kingdom of darkness and it's gonna save them well. So hence he made that covenant. And I was also told that if I had killed myself because of that depression and that whatever thingy that he did to me, he would have come in spirit at night to come and collect whatever he needs from me and perform a certain ritual so that I can now join his crew or to use my blood for his kingdom of darkness. So my God was actually big. He saved me from going to hell, actually. I wasn't aware, guys. But depression is something that the devil uses to win the children of God over. Please, you need to understand what, what I have survived is something that a lot of people have never survived. Those people are dead, long gone, and they have been forgotten. And I was also warned that they know that I haven't killed myself yet and I will never kill myself because that thing has passed. The spell has passed. It is still in my body and it is going to make me sick and eat me up. So the plan is they have already selected one guy from the group of the friends of the guy. Imagine for me to date and then this guy is going to marry me off very quickly very very quickly and as soon as i'm married to this guy and i'm happy and i think that oh i am mrs mama the guy divorces me and he is left with 50 percent of my assets imagine so going back to that place i knew that i'm not gonna date any hamors i'm sorry to be this rowdy on youtube but that's what i knew i'm not gonna date any rubbish from that place and that's what exactly happened you know so it happened that when I got back a few months later, I think three months later, one of his friends started saying hi baby to me. And I was like, what the fuck? So this thing is true. And I actually let the guy think that I am dating him. It lasted for like two weeks, that thing, and we didn't have sex. I made sure of it because these guys are dangerous. I'm going to have sex with somebody until they have mooty on them to give to me for other spells guys what i was going through was the biggest thing i have ever seen and it was the last thing so cruel and so evil that i will ever encounter nothing will ever shake me in life it is the biggest thing and it has made me that guy came into my life thinking that is gonna break me but he didn't know that he is crafting me actually i decided to be a big girl and put my big girl panties on and play with fire at least this time i didn't get burnt because i knew exactly that what i'm playing with is dangerous and i have to be careful so i'm glad i was able to get the information that brought me closer to closure to closure like closure is everything and just because you want closure that doesn't mean that you have to now sleep with someone or 
you know do other things you can just sit there and listen and find out the truth and you shall find closure that's how i found my closure i just had to listen and connect the dots and i had what i wanted actually so all this time i just sat down and dealt with the pain and the disappointment and other things that were far from the guy and what he did to me until i found freedom from everything so as he is here with me he is busy talking dirty he is busy spilling the beans on his friend the ex of mine he is busy saying that no that th like i told him that this guy bewitched me and he said to me no that is the game that guys play what a game so my life is a game like he had to play his game with my life i i, I understand Hori, this might be a game but with my life so this is when i actually realized and knew for sure that this guy is really 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 bad bad this guy is not working he is there talking marriage he wants to introduce me to his mother every time he's talking come and visit me into my room and something said to me you know what if you are going to visit this guy in his room that's where he's gonna kill you you are not in a position to trust this man because he is sent he is sent so yours is just to prove it actually to sit here with him and watch him through this whole act to actually be reassured that this thing was actually a setup and what the sangoma said is true so you need to be extra careful and you need to protect yourself because your life is under a great deal of danger my girl that is the voice in me so i had to be very careful you know i had to be very careful the second week my ancestors paid me a visit an abrupt one for that matter and all i had to do was listen i had to listen it was through a dream and they were warning me about a boyfriend At that time i don't have a boyfriend but there is this a uh, broke guy who is proposing marriage i don't know what he's gonna pay lobola with if he is that broke but he is here and he wants to marry me off so i had to cut ties with this guy and luckily i didn't struggle at doing it because his girlfriend passed away so he had to bounce and go home and drink his small pots we call them pizana in our Tswana language so he had to bounce and go and drink his thing and mind his business and by the time six months was over i was like no my guy you know what you are not the one for me so just live your life i got what i wanted and i am good so the traditional healer also told me that you know the guy the boyfriend the ex actually is busy telling people that i have taken a transfer i'm no longer going back to that place i have found work in a different place that time i am not even about that because i realized something if i'm going to heal from this thing i have to go back to that place and heal in front of the very same people that try to kill me you know and that was the plan it was the plan i didn't have the energy but i knew that my god is bigger than everyone else's god i'm sorry to say this but damn it is true so i had to go back and i went back the ex saw me and damn it guys this story is actually very heartbreaking but i'm not gonna cry because i have cried here yeah, i have cried a river i cried every day i cried every day i cried every after two hours i would go back to work and then come back to my room to cry god i had crying breaks because i was heartbroken and although my god was big and my ancestors were on my side it was very difficult to heal from that thing because it was not a natural one you know when i'm sitting there trying to heal this guy is there mixing his smoothies and making the disease even stronger so i i had to endure like at some point i realized that this is very painful actually and the reason why i lost weight it is not because i was not eating i had lost appetite i was having this severe body pains and i could feel every moment that this pain is eating away my body so one day i'm after the cleansing this guy doesn't even know where i'm back i haven't talked to him i have deleted like delete not deactivated deleted my facebook account because that's when i realized that it is not actually very wise for me to keep 
a social media profile. So I had to delete the profile and live my life. And that time I used to be so alive on social media. I had a large following, you know, and by now I'm selling this book. If I had kept that account alive, my books would have sold like cakes because I had people there who were rooting for me already. I had forgotten my pen to Nessa's home, so I had to go back to Nessa's home quickly to get the pen. And as I'm walking, my head is down like this. I'm looking down and something in me said, girl, you are always looking down. Are you looking down on yourself or what? Is it the self-esteem or what? Please lift up your head and walk like a lady. You have to be aware of your surroundings. As soon as I lifted my head like this, Guys, there was my ex walking with his friend. So dirty. I don't understand. It's like he had forgotten that I didn't die and I will come back and we will meet no matter what. So this guy is passing there and he's looking at me like staring at me. He doesn't even look on the road that he's walking on. At some point, something said, go to the window and look at this guy. So I went to the window and I stood there. And I looked at him. Guys, he then, he, it's, it's like he had forgotten that where he is standing, he is very, like I can see him from my room. But he was there talking, very angry, Liman. He was very angry and he was doing this like he is used to. I was there. I was looking at him like this. Like this guy was pissed to see me back. He was pissed. To see me alive and he knew very well that i am coming with shit nothing else people started coming at me and then they are telling me that no when I, this guy broke your heart he broke you Ooh, he, he he really did you shit so people are coming through people are coming through and then one day i decided i don't know man i didn't decide it but something in me snapped and i decided to tell people that this guy bewitched me he actually wanted to date me for my money and then he didn't get what he wanted from me. So this is what he did. And I gave him the story as it is. So they were like, what the fuck? And they didn't even say no. This guy's... Others even told me that his family is practicing this thing. They are the best witches of the village. Eh? What are you saying? They have been caught several times here and there and there and there doing this thing. We didn't know that even the kids are practicing it. And I said, well, they are practicing it because here he is doing the things to me. The security guy who was helping me to direct my sister the day that I was very, very ill and had to come home said to me that, you know, my heart was broken for you, actually. Like, when you were dating this guy, I thought maybe it is love, but something said maybe it isn't love, but I didn't think things to that point. So I couldn't just come up to you and tell you that these people are bad. They are dangerous, actually, because you might have gone to your boyfriend and told him that I said, and then it's a whole lot of mess. So I was like, wow. So you guys have been looking at me walking in the valley of death and you didn't even say anything and they were like what 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 is it that we could have done nobody was surprised actually at my story no one was surprised and the other guy even said to me you know there was a point where i had to ask this guy how can you dump Tseho? it is such a lovely girl how can you do that and he didn't have an answer but he had a whole big mouth a whole big mouth that he has been using to talk about my name and ruin my reputation and my image and apparently this guy would sit at the taverns with his friends and discuss me you know the time that i'm on duty and he's there in my room pretending to be asleep the minute i leave the room he wakes up and he starts searching around for my pay sleep and for whatever information that can be valuable to the person that sent him. Guys, I started becoming a very rowdy and ghetto person. I insulted the fuck out of everyone that was involved. Hey, I went crazy. I went crazy. As soon as I got back to that place, I had to sit down, take my phone, put it on a charger. It was off. It had been two long months since I had stopped using it. So as soon as it was on and it had enough battery, I sat down and I went through everything and deleted each and every little memory of that guy.
I actually deleted his numbers. Just delete. I didn't block. I just left everything as it was. So that one day, when he wants to say hi, he can say hi. And I can tell him exactly where to get off. That's what I do. I don't block people because blocking people doesn't work for me. I will just delete you and move on with my life. You know, that's what I did. Guys, I'm gonna have to say bye-bye. The story is not actually over yet. Like, this story is very fucked up. It's very messy. It is long. It has a lot of caves and shit. So, if you want to know exactly what happened afterwards, how I found out that this guy is a satanist, like, really, really found out, and how he wanted to join me now that I'm alive and I'm here, like, he tried that, you will have to subscribe to my channel turn the notification bell on you know and keep posted because i am gonna share it soon probably i don't know i just decided to have some guts to shoot this it took me forever and probably the ex is busy stalking me so this is a surprise from me to you you haven't won baby i am the winner here Bye bye